John, clearly all games are important. Clearly all games are, you know, a potential three points. Is there something a little bit special about approaching, firstly, Easter football and then a home game against one of your local rivals? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Easter period. You know, obviously two quick games, quick session type of thing. Um, so, But it's a derby, uh, one that I'm looking forward to. I've been in the, the derbies before previously. Um, so they're always tight affairs, phone goes out the window. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Look, really looking forward to the, the Friday game, yeah. But is there a different feel around these bank holiday games when they're not on a Saturday, but you kick off at three o'clock and you get bigger crowds and stuff like that? Yeah, especially, I think, if you get the weather as well. I mean, people come out and watch the game, that's for sure. Um, and it is, yeah, it is a, a bank holiday Friday game. So there is a dip, slightly different feel. Uh, you know, the, the, the week's slightly different because of, obviously, you're moving your game, uh, you're moving your training. Uh, times and stuff so yeah um, excited about it all I think the lads are you can prepare the way you can prepare for it and hopefully you get a result how much does that atmosphere play a part there'll be a really healthy contingent of Morecambe fans here I'm sure the Accrington fans will respond to that as much as everybody's a professional and loves playing the game does that atmosphere add something the atmosphere definitely adds something I mean the fans have been brilliant haven't they the first class our fans you know all around the stadiums, especially Clayton End, you know, with the flags and everything else, they always get behind the team, which is which is brilliant. Um, and it does add, it does add to it. And then, you know, it's, the, the added spice is that it's a derby, the bragging rights, if you like. But as I said before, um, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think the players are uh, prepared right for it. And, um, you know, I'm uh, excited for this, this Friday. There's the added sort of context to this that Jed Brannan comes back as Morecambe manager back to Accrington for the first time add to that that you're now the Accrington manager as well mm. can could you have imagined when you were coming into training and for all those years and and putting on all those sessions that you'd end up facing each other like this so soon no it's 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 mad to think because like I think six months ago we were in the same car traveling together you know and having a laugh and having a joke and as you said you know tra on the training pitch and stuff and and doing games together and stuff like that. So to come up against uh, Jed now and his teams, um, it's going to be a bit, you know, it, well, surreal really. Like, but um, but no, look, one that I'm looking forward to. I'm sure he's looking forward to the challenge, and I definitely want, can't wait to just for the game to get going really, and um, and just attack and get at them, and hopefully get a result for our fans. You'll have played against your mates before. I'm sure you've coached against your mates yeah. before. What's it going to be like that dynamic? Because I know you guys get on really well, but for ninety minutes you have to be you know up against each other well he wants the best for his team and obviously and I want the best for our team so um, you know Jed's a good lad uh, he has a good manner on the touchline so uh, I'd like to think I have, have myself so I think uh, I think we'll, we'll get on alright I think I, I'd say he would probably have a go with the fourth official more than what I would so I'm looking forward to that um, so yeah so I, I think um, both of us are winners by the way so we want to win the game so I think we'll be both of us will be going all out to win the game um, so it'll be interesting just to see how things play out on the side what makes Jed Brannan a good coach? I think he's a good coach because of what you see day to day. I think how he conducts himself. I think how he sets his teams up. Um, you know the results that he's had in the past, um, and I obviously know him like you know I've known him for years now. So you know all that in the mix, and and that now he's proved that he can step up into a first team environment and um, and put a team on the pitch that the fans will be proud of, and and obviously he's got the results as well. Is it hard for there to be any surprises between two guys who know each other very well? Um, yeah, I think there will be a couple of surprises. I think he's 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 looked at our uh, our Atkinson and I've looked at Morgan. So you know, and I think the conversation will be um, afterwards will be quite funny, really, in terms of what you know, what weaknesses did you see, what strengths did you see in us, and and we'll have a good little chat afterwards. Like, but beforehand, um, I'm giving nothing away, and I'm sure Jed won't give anything away either. What have you made of Morgan then? Because because they're on this run of of losing games, having only lost something like one in seven before that it, it feels like a, an untimely bad run of form if there's such thing as a timely bad run of form well I go back to what I said earlier Dan is that I just think personally if form goes out the window in the derby so you know I've seen that many times in at higher levels so you can come in the best form ever and then play a derby game and then you know you just think what happened there so you know yet they've got had a bit bad run of results recently um, you know with as it being a mixed mixed bag so as I said, I think form will go out the window, but personally, I just I just want it to be a good game and hopefully go Atkinson's way. 
What would you do for a clean sheet at the moment? I know you've had a couple of decent results and performances, mm. but that's been something that's been missing for seven or eight games. Yeah, well, I think the lads are trying desperate to try and keep a clean sheet. I mean, I don't need to go out on purpose to try and, you know, concede goals. Um, you know, we've changed keepers many a time this season. Um, we've changed personnel in the back four, either through injury or through suspension. So I think as a team, starting from the front line, you know, you've got to defend from the front. So hopefully we can get that clean sheet tomorrow. How much of that is psychological? If you've kept a load of clean sheets, do you then feel the confidence? And if you've perhaps not kept one for a while, it maybe plays on your mind. Well, I think you're right. I think it is confidence because I think the more you do keep, the more that you, you, there's more belief within the, within the team, within the back five, back four, whichever shape you play. So I think it is a confidence thing. And I think once you've got one and then you get another one, I think you could something to build on, something that you want to keep and the desire to like not concede goals. But as I said, it's not just about the back line. It's about the whole team. So defend from the front, don't let it come through your midfield third and then hopefully you keep it out, uh, out out the back of the goal. And I know you've spoken a little bit about being able to plan for the longer term and looking at players' futures and I know the chairman's spoken a bit this week about the longer term future. It might be too strong a word to use, John, but is there an element of experimentation between now and the end of the season? Is there an element of seeing what players can do, giving players an opportunity... Yeah. And can you do that in a local derby? I don't think you can do it. Well, I'm not saying you can't do it in a local derby. It, it all depends, you know, it's, you know, it's what the manager or, or the coaching staff want to obviously have a chat about and, and what do, going forward. But personally, I think you can't do it in this derby, no. Um, I think going forward, maybe in the next... I've alluded to that in previous interviews with yourself, Dan, that that's something that I want to do, want to look at. I want to give uh, a few lads a chance. I want the fans to see what's coming through. Uh, so they can have an opinion on it, you know. Obviously, they'll all talk on the terraces. So I want to give lads a chance, and I want to see if um, if they can actually play league football. How is the personnel situation looking? Because I know there've been some positives recently with situations like Joe Pritchard being able to be involved yeah. and start a game, <laughs> and the subs bench has looked certainly like it has more experience. Is this a a trend that's going in the right direction? Oh, well, hopefully, yeah. I think we've got Matt Lowe coming back. I think he's had it spent a week at St George's, so Matt's coming back. Um, so yeah, so it's again, it's it's getting these back on the pitch. We're looking slightly stronger. We could change slightly in the next few games after the Easter period, possibly. Just as I said before, to look at a certain lads that we we need to make decisions on. Do you welcome those options and those selection problems? Yeah, definitely, because it's part and parcel of being the the manager or the decision maker. So you know, you've got to throw lads in there. You've got to give them chances. Um, to see where you're at, basically. And as I said before, it is to make a decision on them because, you know, with this, there's a future is bright here. You've know, got some young players coming through the youth team, which are very good. And I've, I've touched on it before, Dan, as well, is that, you know, we want to get experienced players in and, and have a good balance right through the team. 